Hi, friends, and welcome to Strange Times Poetry Broadcast. I'm coming to you live from the Poetry Bookshelf. Um, it may look a little more sparse than this one because I've been pulling all the poetry books off the shelf to try and find our uplifting poems. So I'm going to be reading three uplifting poems. Um, the first one is going to be by Rutke. The second one is going to be by a dear friend and publisher, Brian Borland. And of course, the last poem by myself. Um, and I hope that you will, if you're seeing this for the first time, please like our page, Strange Times Poetry Broadcast, for more so that you can see all of our poetry broadcasts. It's usually about 8 to 12 minutes every night at 8 p.m. Um, I'm so glad that you're joining me here tonight. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about acceptance. One of my uh, one of my friends, Matt Gelman, who I featured a few uh, episodes ago, and I decided that this would be the year of acceptance. And we were sort of referring to getting our poems accepted for publication. Little did we know <laughs> that this was on its way. Um, so thinking about acceptance now, there's always you know the accept the things you can't change sort of element of it. But I think a lot of us are experiencing loss in different ways. Sometimes it's big loss, loss of life, loss of jobs. Other times it's, you know, loss, losses that are smaller or unseen. You know, things that you had planned that were really important to you that have suddenly disappeared. Um, you know, I'm sure you know for yourself which things those are. So we're accepting loss because we don't have any other choice. And in some ways, acceptance is being forced upon us. You know, we have to accept that we're living in more fear than usual. Um, we have to accept new restrictions. We have to, like I said, accept that loss and what we can't know. But there's also moments where we have to remember to accept joy, to look around and see what, um, what we can accept that brings positivity and also, there's a certain element of agency with acceptance. Yes, we're being forced to accept a lot of things, but moments of agency come when we choose to accept things for ourselves. Um, so the first poem that I'm going to read by Rucky, I have it here in the collected poems, but it's also from um, Lost Sons and Other Poems, the original book. And this poem, I think, is more about finding that moment to accept joy, to to notice nature and to accept, you know, to accept what it's offering to us. And many of us, even if we're kind of on lockdown, still have the opportunity to spend those moments outside and accept, you know, that spring is coming and what it has to offer us. This poem is called The Waking. I strolled across an open field. The sun was out, heat was happy. This way, this way, the wren's throat shimmered. Either to other, the blossoms sang. The stones sang, the little ones did, and flowers jumped like small goats. A ragged fringe of daisies waved. I wasn't alone in a grove of apples. Far in the wood, a nestling sighed. The dew loosened its morning smells. I came where the river ran over stones. My ears knew an early joy. And all the waters of all the streams sang in my veins that summer day. I love this line. Um, where did it go? Oh, yes. The wren's throat shimmered. Either to other, the blossoms sang. Either to other, the blossoms sang. I love that. There's just something about that language. It's like to one another, but there's a little twist. It's just either to other. Maybe in this world we are either to other through, through, through FaceTime, through Zoom, either to other, we're reaching out. All right, my next poem is by Brian Borland. He is the publisher of um, Sibling Rivalry Press. And I, when I think of Brian, Brian Borland, I think back to this beautiful moment that we had um, one summer, we were both at Lambda Literary Workshop, and it was the summer that gay marriage was finally uh, accepted by the Supreme Court. And the way that we found out this news, because we were together that morning, was we were sitting at breakfast outside, and a tiny bird, like a finch or something, 
landed on Brian Borland's hand. It was before the Bernie version of the bird landing. This was this was its own thing. It was just like Brian sitting there with a bird on his finger and the world was accepting, you know, accepting love. And um, I don't know, I couldn't have picked a better person with whom to share that moment. It's Brian and his magical bird. Um, so this poem is called How to Grieve. And I would say it's more towards how we accept, how we accept grief and loss in this time, but also how we accept our emotions and our feelings surrounding these difficult times. You know, it's okay to feel stressed out, to feel sad, you know, just because we don't have to say, we don't have to throw that away. You know, we have to just feel what we're feeling. Um, how to grieve. Primordial screams are acceptable. Remind yourself to eat. Spontaneous tears in the morning will last several weeks. Spontaneous tears at kindness will last several months. It will affect you in ways you do not recognize immediately. Some days you will not recognize yourself. The stages are denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance, but they do not come necessarily in that order. Do not hold yourself to impossible standards. Do not tell yourself to man up. Do not pretend you have both legs. Do not think yourself crazy for talking to walls. Expect to lash out at your spouse. When a stranger cuts you off on the, free on the freeway, try not to chase her down. Do not run her off the road. I love that. It will affect you in ways you do not recognize immediately. It's true. All right. And my last poem is from my book, The Evolution of Parasites, illustrated beautifully by Robin Levine. Um, and this poem is called Beekeeping. Um, when I was in the Peace Corps, we learned how to do beekeeping with Africanized bees, which is very different than what you have in the States, where we have these European bees that are very docile and friendly. The Africanized bees are kind of intense. When you open up the hive, they're, you know, they're in your face, they're bumping you, they're, the sound of their buzzing is loud, and it just, the first time that you hear it, it really just makes you feel this, like, this gasp of fear. You kind of feel your heart beating, the adrenaline kicking up, because it's just this extremely intense buzzing sound and your body just knows this is not a good idea. Um, and so to work with the bees, you have to accept that you're going to get stung. You have to accept sort of the fear of that moment and you kind of hold it and you live with it and you work with them anyway. And, you know, delicious things come from it. Um, so this poem is about uh, working with those Africanized bees. Beekeeping. You approach from the back, shed your human smell between reeds of lemongrass, holding coals in tin jars, accordions pumping. When you slide the knife through waxed over creases, you pull off the wood cover to find the moon of a thousand bodies humming, oxygen of fan wings, mountains and gorges of hexagonal print wax, larva capped in for the winter, honey. Smell it through the smoke in your fingers. As you soar through the planet frame by frame, the workers bump your face, breasts, shoulders, convex of kneecap. Thread your yellow constellation for one instant onto the morning air. All right. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope to see you back here again tomorrow night at 8. We'll be reading more poems. Um, if you have an uplifting poem that you would like to share, please send it to me. And please like Strange Times Poetry Broadcast so you can tune in to have some uplifting poems to help us through this difficult time. And remember, stay safe, stay sane, and good night. Bye!